everyone, Helen here. Thanks for coming to join me. Uh, today I am going to, well mainly I'm doing this one to, because I'm joining in with something that I was uh, uh, asked if I wanted to do, which was to join in with something called hashtag amigurumi book tag, which I was nominated to do it by uh, Jeanette of Crafty Clegs Creations. And she was nominated by a lovely lady whose name I can't remember, who has a YouTube channel called Hooks and Stitches. Anyway, so the nomination was to just to share all of, all of the um, Amigurumi books. Well, no, maybe not all of them. I think maybe up to ten. I haven't actually got that many. This is my little pile here. It's a surprisingly small pile. Uh, I think that's because quite often I just buy the separate patterns. But anyway, I'm going to show you those a little bit later on. And I'm also going to just update you on one or two projects. And I'm also going to show you what's on that uh, house shaped shelf that often is behind me. I'm not sitting over there today because the, just because of the where the sun is, but um, I'm going to show you what's on there at the moment. <laughs> uh, but first of all, just uh, some finished projects. Uh, two that I should have shown you last time and I didn't, and one that I showed you almost finished and is now finished and that one actually you can pro probably notice it's just beside me here and that is the uh, fireside blanket that's all finished now uh, and I am really pleased with it it's actually going to be a gift for someone this one but uh, I, uh, I blocked it I steam blocked it because the where that you join the squares together it's join as you go the joins it's kind of stick up a bit so it's quite nice to steam block them and uh it just just flattens it out a little bit but other than that i didn't need to do the corners or anything it's lying really nice nice and flat and square and uh yeah something that uh i that was in the pattern this time that i've not come across before on a square blanket which is by this one by Lucy of Attic 24, is that when you come to do the border, which is just granny stitch round and round, uh, that each colour has two rows. And for the second row, you have to work with the wrong side of the blanket facing you, uh, which was interesting. But apparently that just helps to keep it looking more square because square blankets can go a bit skew with. And that's worked perfectly. It's really good. I'm very pleased with how that's turned out. So yeah, lovely blanket, Stylecraft Highland Heathers, uh, which I've never used before, but they're really lovely. They're not solid colours, uh, you know, we've got lots of lots of other little speckly, speckly, I don't know what you call that, speckly yarn? Anyway, anyway, it's very nice, whatever it is. And so yeah, finished, hooray. Uh, I have started another blanket but it's only in its infancy and that's a knitted one the jelly roll blanket by k of the bakery bears uh, youtube channel um so i'll just show you a couple of photos now just to show that it's yeah i'm not very far along but i'm i'm doing it to use up lots and little balls of stylecraft special dk that i've got they're just building up and building up and I don't even really use them much for toys. I tend to use four ply yarns for toys. Uh, uh, so the Stylecraft Special DK is just all leftovers from blankets. So I thought I would give this jelly roll blanket a go. If you don't know what jelly roll is, uh, I think it's something that's normally used about fabric of a certain size that you can use for quilting, sort of long thin uh, rectangles. but. Uh, so this uh, knitted blanket is kind of mimicking that a little bit. But anyway, I'll show you more of that as I go on. But it's not, it's just an as and when project, I think. I'm not going to be working on it all the time. And I've made no progress since I last spoke to you with my crochet jumper. So I'll not even show you that. Uh, but I think it's really because I was, you know, as I was coming to the end of this, I just really wanted to get this finished. So that's what I was mostly working on. Um, 
If you follow me on Instagram, then you will know, uh, and if you don't, then I'll tell you now, uh, that I, um, I've made a start on another bear. I just, I just felt a gap in my life. I needed another little bear and specifically another pattern by Cynthia Valet. And uh, so if, if you follow me for a while, you'll know I've made a few of her beautiful toys. Uh, I've made Tsutsu Bear. I've made three Tsutsu Bears, I think, now. I've made a little mole. I've made a mouse and, uh, and a turtle. So I decided to try a new one. Uh, but a, a bear, but the bigger bear, which I think came before Tutu Bear, in fact. It's called Myrtle Bear. And although I know the name Myrtle to be a female name, that in the pattern, Cynthia Valet talks about the bear as if it's a he. But I think mine is definitely going to be uh, a little girl. Um, I'm using Cascade Heritage 4-ply. It's beautiful, soft. It's got a slight fluff to it, so I think it'll be really lovely as a bear. Uh, you can see so far, I have just done her head. And so th in this series of photos, you can see where I had to uh, place yarn for the eye placings and for the ears, where you have to pick up stitches for the ears. And so the first thing I did was I stuffed it very slightly just so it had a little bit of shape, just so I could, um, uh, oh, it was really for when I was embroidering the nose and mouth that I needed it to have a little bit of uh, firm filling to it. Well, a little bit firmer, not floppy, unstuffed. Um, so yeah, I used embroidery thread to do the nose and went round lots and lots of times to make sure it was a nice black nose and a little smiley mouth and then I tried out quite a few pairs of eyes. I took photos of uh, of the bear and tried to decide which eyes I like the best. So I had a slightly larger eye to start off with, tried two different colours. I did try black eyes but I forgot to take a photo of that so you can't see what that looks like. But then I found a slightly smaller blue eye and when I put that in I just knew that was what I wanted for this bear. So that's that's what she's got. And then I went on to do one of the ears you can see in this photo. So I, and it is always amazes me how I can fall in love with the bear just as soon as I put the eyes on <laughs> and the nose. And, and now I feel like I'm already getting to know her. Uh, but I'll keep you posted with with how I get on with with that bear and maybe talk a little bit more in detail about it without giving too much away because obviously it's a pattern that I've paid for. Um, but yes, I think that's that's the bear. And last time that I was talking about projects, I said that there was one that I'd forgotten to show you. And that was um, a, just a tiny little blanket that I made for Pearl, who's our doll who lives in the camper van, our camper van mascot, who lives with her pet dog, Dean. And um, I decided that she needed a blanket. And and so and it was a nice little project actually to have away with me in the camper van, just making these little squares, which I think are called Tiny Coat Squares by Lucy of Attic 24. I'll leave a link in the description anyway. And and then I just made up a, a border for it. But I think Pearl is very, very pleased with that. <laughs> so uh so that yeah that was that one and then the uh, not the other project which I actually told you that I finished last time now for some reason I don't know why I didn't show you a picture of it and that was my uh felt applique embroidered wall hanging that I made uh through advent so I did a little bit each day through advent and so I added a backing onto it just another piece of felt just to firm it up a bit and just, I just hand sewed it on all the way around and and the, and I also put in three loops at the top uh, for hanging, for putting the um, piece of wood in for hanging it up and I've just put a bit of yellow ribbon there at the moment but I thought well, I'll probably change it to red or something a bit more Christmassy anyway but it's now put away with the Christmas things and um, I'm looking forward to getting that out next next year. So I think that's it for projects. So 
I uh, think I'll show you now the uh, house shelves, the little house on the wall of my craft room, which uh, is just a place I put, you know, finished small toys that I've made or the odd other little thing that I might have bought. It changes uh, constantly, really, what's on there. I put things on, I take things off. But at the moment, you, you can have a look to see what's on, on these shelves. So on this shelf, we've got this little vintage bear that I made with movable joints on his arms and legs. I've got Mousy here, who I made right at the start of my podcasts when I called it Mousy Makes. And behind is the little crochet fairy that I made last year. I've got this little felt mat that I made from Hannah's Field, a Hannah's Field pattern. It's called a soft spot, putting some special things. It's got a little bit of sea glass and some shells on it there. Uh, this budgie I did not make, but I bought it oh, years ago because it reminded me of the budgie we had called Digger uh, when I was a child. Down here is a not very well made <laughs> mouse that I made from, oh, it's called a very pattern called Very Nice Mice and Wood, handmade, that's, there you go. And then in there, we'll move the budgie. We've got this little mouse that I bought, needle felted mouse from, I think it's called In the Forest Felting Etsy shop. We've got a leaf sprite that I made. That was that was one I made after the um, 100 day project where I made all my leaves last year. It was an extra one I made when I had my nieces to stay. Here is the day and night bunny that I made. Oops, try and focus it. Come on camera. There we go. So that's the day and night bunny because it's awake on one side and asleep on the other. Again, that was by from the pattern was from Hannah's Field, although um, I do believe that Hannah is uh, closing her Etsy shop for the time being. Here is a knitted syringe. Uh, and right at the back there is, oh, the first Tsutsu bear that I made. A bit dark back there, isn't it? And then the... In fact, the very first Cynthia Valet pattern that I made was the mouse, Sadie Suri. And she's sitting with the first Tutu bear that I made. And we have another mouse here. Oops, I've got things falling on the floor now. Uh, oh, he's got muddly whiskers, hasn't he? I can't remember where that pattern was from. No, I can't remember. Uh, there's a beautiful little mouse. I love that mouse. And that pattern is by, uh, I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember, we also have got, oh we've got another little mouse, same pattern as the first one, there and back there, hiding back there, is a little, you know, it's meant to be a toadstool and it's got a little squirrel in it, so <laughs> it just hasn't gone to a New home yet. I think that's all on that shelf. Oh no, there's something behind here. Something behind there. Oh, <laughs> this is a needle felted hippo that my daughter made. And actually it doesn't even belong to me, so I don't know what it's doing there. Okay, beside here we've got... Oh, oh I'm going to focus them please. There we go. Um, these are two lovely little characters that I bought from uh, Myriad Toys. I can't remember the name of the make they are, but uh, yes, we've got an apple fairy and an acorn fairy here. I think I'll move you two out of the way so we can see what's behind you. And oh, a stone, a painted stone that I bought in Scotland last year. And when I was in Keswick, I bought this little miniature stope with Mrs. Rabbit and the um, and her children, Peter Rabbit there, and right, let's just move that stone as well, 
see, oh, and that will hold the stop. You'll go there. Yep, I've got two little pom pom rabbits that my mum made for me a while ago, and another rabbit. I mm, can't remember the pattern make for this one either. Seems to have some bells around him. There, you move out of the way. We've got this uh, little leaf. You won't focus on it. There we go, that I bought last year, also in Scotland, in fact. Little, little leaf elf. And right at the back there, we have got a little crochet Easter egg. Another mouse, not two mice in fact, a pumpkin mouse. There, sitting back there, I've got some old got some postcards there, things. And there is a little storybook. I don't know why this is here really. I don't normally keep books on this shelf. Lovely little storybook there. Okay then, so upstairs we have uh, the gnome that I knit as part of a mystery gnome knit along, oh, I think the year before last, actually. I have another tutu bear. That was this, this is the second one that I made. That's mistletoe. So she's a Christmas bear with her Christmas jumper and little socks there. Then we have my little Christmas mouse that I bought from Paula of Stitched by Mrs. D. And... A little snow bunny that I also bought from her. There we go, cute little snow bunny. And oh, I've seen that rabbit I'm up there. And then this crocheted rabbit here, who I made last year, I think, by a, a, a Ukrainian designer. And that's why the colours of the neck warmer are you the Ukrainian flag. Lovely pattern that. And then finally, sitting next door to them, oh, I've got two of my teeny tiny gnomes there. And we have Emmeline Pankhurst. I have the little kitten that I've just finished making. And kitten, if you can move off that lap for the moment. And oh, a peg doll that I made not so long ago. And finally, sitting there. Oh, there's somebody's hat there as well. Finally, next to Emmeline Pankhurst is this doll, which I knitted oh, a long time ago. And I'll show you her a bit more another time. I'll take her out, but I'll leave her sitting there for the moment. Yeah, so it always makes me very happy having those shelves there and seeing all the cute little things, or things that just give me happy memories. And... Uh, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed having a bit of a closer look at that. Uh, I think it's probably, uh, I ought to do another little tour of my craft room for you. I did it oh, probably a couple of years ago and I have changed things a bit. And uh, so, yeah, I think I'll have to do that at some point for you fairly soon so you can have a proper look. I, I love looking in other people's craft rooms. So, yeah, I'll do that at some point. And so, yeah, so... Um, uh, now I'm going to show you m the books that I've got, that I've got piled here, uh, uh, which are all amigurumi. So apologies to anybody who's purely a knitter, uh, but you might like to see the cute kind of things that you can make from crochet and just to switch books uh, I have on my shelf. I did do a little series quite a while ago showing you what was on my, the bookshelves, which you can just see over in the corner there. Uh, and I did the first three or even four shelves I think you know over weeks and I think there was one shelf that I didn't do but because I then rearranged the books uh, then I, I can't remember whether the books on the bottom shelf are ones that you've seen already or not so, so that's why I didn't do another one of those but I, I might just pick out one or two to show you another time and, and perhaps next time I'll make sure they're knitting ones but for today uh, um, have a look at the books that I've got only seven, actually. I'm really surprised that I only had seven. But uh, yeah, as I say, as I said, I think at the start, um, I think I buy a lot of separate patterns rather than buying buying books. So anyway, here, here we go. Here are my books. 
So the first one on my pile is this one, Amigurumi Dolls by Sachio Ishii. Uh, some absolutely gorgeous little dolls to make here. And I have had an attempt at one of these and I was so disappointed with how I'd done it that I threw actually threw it away. Maybe I should have shown it to you. I don't know what was wrong with it, but I was not happy with it. But I do want to make some of these little little dolls here. There's two sizes in here. Um, and smaller ones. And hopefully I can find the... Oh, look at that. Look at that little bee and ladybird. They are gorgeous. Uh, princess there. Actually, to be careful not to show you the patterns, should I? And there should be a page with all of the bigger dolls in, which I'm now not finding. I should have put the bookmark in to show you. Well, hopefully you get the general idea of that anyway. And yeah, they are lovely. Very, very fiddly. Fiddly crochet, definitely. Because they, they are quite small. Um, yeah, I think these ones here are the finished size if you use the yarn. Four ply yarn. Finished size is uh, eight centimetres or three inches tall. And then the bigger ones are 10 centimetres or four inches. And uh, yeah, there's oh, really, really lovely little dolls there. But I'll have to get back to that one. Next one, which I've shown you before, is the Edwards Crochet Doll Emporium, which is a mix and match book where you can choose the bottom that you want, the clothing style of clothing that you want and then mix it with oops, uh, the top, the head that you want and this is the book that I used to make Pearl, our mascot for the uh, camper van. So that's that one, that's all I'll say about that one. Uh, the little book uh, that I've had for absolutely ages and never made anything out of it. It has such adorable things in it. And this actually might match up nicely with the uh, the tiny dolls book as well. I think they'll be about the smaller doll will be about the right size to fit into here. You can see all these beautiful things that you can uh, crochet. All the tiny little details, ice cream van there, and uh, yeah, oh, just looking at the pictures makes you want to have a go at it. Let's see what else I can show you. TP, TP in a normal tent. This a caravan, and oops, it's hard to. To flick through and not have to show you the pattern. And yeah, look at those, look at those lovely little scenes, they're so nice. Look at that. And oh, and I love the canal boat as well. Actually, that's the thing I was going to make after I'd had the uh, canal boat holiday last time. I was going to make one of those. Look, isn't that beautiful? Oh, look at Look at all the plants and things on the top. Flowers, that's beautiful. So, yeah, a lo lovely book, but just never quite got round to it. Uh, and, but I might do that this year. Who knows? Lots of trees there. So, yeah, lovely little book there. And so this one here, you've seen, you've well, if you've been watching me regularly, you'll have seen me make some things out of this book. I've made quite a few, quite a few of these uh, iconic women now and yeah there's Emmeline Pankhurst that I've made uh, Jane Austen here the Queen and one other one I've made oh over here <laughs> uh, what's she called I've forgotten her name now uh, oh her name's gone out of my head Greta Thunberg that's right looking in the contents here Let's see there so, and they are lovely, very nicely written patterns, very easy to follow and uh, yeah, just hard work if you don't use the 
<laughs> if you use yarn that is very spitty, as I did for my first couple, uh, once, once I got the right yarn, it was fine. So that's that one. And another one by Kerry Lord. So the uh, Edwards Man Crochet Doll Emporium is by Kerry Lord, who is the founder of Toft. And this one, I think this was maybe her the first one that she produced um all very very well explained and all sorts of different animals in here i have made one out of here i think just one out of here which was maybe in the easy version i can't find it oh it was this one i made the polar bear as a gift for somebody but they're really great because you have basic body, standard body, standard legs and and then they're just adapted slightly with the extra things that you do to make them into different animals. Simon the sheep there, Rufus the lion. So yeah, re really nice book that one. And next one is a mini amigurumi. I do like mini things. Oh, look at that little robin there. So here we go, more tiny things and yeah, you can see see them here. Whole, whole variety of things to make in here, not just animals and people. So, oh, look at him. And I have made a few of the things in here. I, I had a little, I had a time where I was making uh, lots of key rings as presents and so I used some of the things from here they were good for that I don't know if it gives you ideas for that in the end anyway again they're lovely little patterns had no problem with them yeah there's some ideas for what to actually do with these mini things so yeah good nice nice book there mini amigurumi and then this one which is probably my most recent purchase and I haven't made anything out of it yet but it is uh, some uh, I do hope to make some things from it look at that robin is gorgeous lovely blackbird so I have knitted birds before but I haven't often crocheted birds so. and one of the things I love about these books um, is some of them are just so thoughtful in their settings for the photos. Oh, that lovely dove. Oh, look, there's a budgie. Oh, I'll have to make the budgie. Look at him. That's just like the one I've got on my shelf in the craft room. And it's just like the uh, budgie that we had as a pet. Oh, look at the little wren. Yes, I'm really, I really can't wait to make some things from this. And then go and photograph them in some lovely settings as well. So there we go. So I think I'm going to leave it there for today and uh, just wish you a nice, busy, peaceful week. Uh, take good care of yourself and I will see you again very soon. Okay then, bye.